The Vodafone Rally to Portugal witnessed an all-new series during the WRC stages, the Drive DMAC Fiesta Trophy, where 12 crews from around the world have been selected for the chance to win a seven-round season in the WRC 2 in 2050. It's obviously the first event new for us and uh, it's a great challenge. Good to be involved with all the new, you know, the young drivers and have all the 12 cars here. So it just helps promote DMAC in the, in the World Championship and hopefully helps you know, the young drivers come through the championship as well. It's very fair, everyone has the same condition, same cars. And I would say it's the, the best opportunity the best way how to, to see who is the fastest and the best one. So there's going to be a really tough championship, there's a lot of quick drivers. I'm very excited for, for this new year for me. It's my first time in the WRC so we have to learn a lot and so how it goes. I don't think I even find a word how to describe how excited I am. I mean. This is a huge, huge opportunity for me and no, I'm really happy to be part of this DMAC program. All in the same car, same tyres, everything, uh, same setup on the car, so the drivers are not really allowed to make you know, very few small changes. So it's a great way to analyse and see how the drivers are getting on. But yeah, it's a total you know, level playing field and it's down to the drivers themselves so you know it, it really will bring out a true champion i guess at the end of the year so a new beginning for these 12 young drivers and their co-pilots the first stop on this new adventure a journey 300 kilometers north from the rally's base in faro to estoril and the official start ceremony to get this new series underway The bulk of the rally, though, would take place in the far south in the Algarve, 16 stages ahead with 330 kilometres of racing against the clock. Day one featuring three more stages run twice. Algarve, one of the most picturesque regions in Portugal. As with the WRC Elite, the DMAX Shot Fiestas began the event with a spectacular blast through the historic heart of Portugal's capital city, Lisbon. Former junior WRC runner Jose Suarez setting the fastest time in stage one. Suarez's fellow Spaniard Uray Lemesh, the runner-up in last year's JWRC, came a close second behind his compatriot, just six tenths of a second slower than Suarez on the Lisbon asphalt. 22-year-old Norwegian Marius Arsen also made an impressive start in his identical Ford Fiesta R2, just four and a half seconds off the pace-setting time to sit third on the leaderboard after stage one. Mil Solans meanwhile only began his rally career two years ago, but the two-wheel drive Spanish national champion made it three Spaniards in the top four in Lisbon, surprising himself with his efforts in the process. And Quentin Gilbert ensured France were represented in the top five and stage one as well. So confirmation then of the standings after the Lisbon test. Suarez the man to beat at this early stage. Further back, Estonian Sander Parr was sixth. So all 12 drivers in identical Fiesta R2s on identical DMAC tyres and given the same mechanical assistance back at base. The young drivers' technical training all part of the process in this new series. Friday marked the first full day of action for the 12 competitors of this all-new competition. Max Vatnen, son of 1981 world champion Ari, was fifth early on until this moment cost him time and then a roll on the final stage of the day put him out for good. Front though, it was Spanish starlet Jose Suarez who was again the man to beat. The 23-year-old on his fourth Portugal rally put his experience to good use. 
The overnight leader set about extending his lead with two fastest times across the Friday stages. Suarez began to show a clean pair of heels to the chase pack. Yeah, it was a, a, a really, really good day. We we have a good rhyme. Sometimes we we have the the cool mind. We have not in the past. And last year we we have not this. But I am really happy. I am leading it. And it remained an all Spanish lockout of the top two spots on the leaderboard. Suarez's compatriot Jere Lemes, the runner-up in last year's JWRC, claimed a stage win on the way to second place, ending the day 21 seconds behind the leader. It was a really good day. I ran without taking any risks. The stages were difficult, quite muddy. The rain destroyed the stages completely. And third after the opening day stages was Quentin Gelber. The Frenchman gradually building in his pace as he adjusted to the Fiesta R2, ending the day half a minute behind Lemesh. No mistake, no puncture, no, no choke. Good day. Uh, the rally is still long. The first day uh, was difficult for, for the little car, but uh, we are uh, there uh, in third position. Norwegian driver Marius Arsen, meanwhile, had a frustrating run in his D-Max shot Ford. He claimed two stage wins and briefly held the lead, only to be forced to retire with broken suspension. So a Spanish 1-2 at the end of Friday, with Gilbert third ahead of Sander Pan and British driver Tom Cave in fifth. Further back, Neil Sullins ensured there were three Spaniards in the top six. Simon Konitschke was seventh. Rallying not only the flat-out blast through the time, stages of course travelling through sleepy Portuguese villages, just as much part of the adventure for the Drive DMAC boys and their navigators. Saturday in Portugal and six stages awaited the 11 remaining crews of the Drive DMAC Fiesta Trophy, 146 kilometres in total. Plenty of treacherous Algarve action lay ahead then, and quite a day it would be. The new leader at the end of Saturday's stages would be Quentin Gelbert, the Frenchman's solid, steady approach, paying dividends following mistakes by the previous leaders. It handed Gilbert a three-minute lead, which he extended to nearly three and a half minutes by the end of the day with another stage win. Quite a good day, no mistake, no puncture, uh, no problem with the car, but uh, in the last stage and the last loop, we have a problem on the, on the gearbox, uh, but uh, now we 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 go uh, we 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 are there, so it's, it's good. Sandra Palm would end the day in second, involved in a nip and tuck battle for position with Tom Cave. The Estonian was fortunate to get away with clipping a tree in stage 12. My tactics have been good so far, and uh, uh, pace is, uh, my pace is also developing and that's good um, okay we we have we were um, f uh, fighting with Tom Cave on, on the stages also a bit the fact that Cave had made it to the finish line at all was remarkable in itself the British driver rolling dramatically in the final stage of the day just clipping the tree on the inside of the corner mercifully the Fiesta was intact enough to make it back to the service park and he finished the day just 22 seconds behind par I just turned in a bit too early on a tight corner and there was like a little, uh, like a culvert on the inside and it just it rolled the car over once and luckily there was quite a, quite a lot of spectators to push it back over and it only dropped about 25, 30 seconds luckily but I'm still happy to be in third. <laughs> Three minutes behind Cave in fourth place was Julian de Mevius, the son of former World Rally driver Gregoire, producing a solid error-free run in the Algarve countryside. The leaderboard had been turned on its head literally earlier in the day by a disastrous run in stage 12 by the two Spaniards who'd previously been leading the way. First, Suarez lost the top spot with this dramatic roll. Like Cave, just cutting the corner too tightly, the Fiesta R2 flipped onto its roof. That incident could have seen his compatriot Jure Lemes take over the lead, but the second pass through Santa de Serra was becoming a Spanish scrapyard. Lemes too was out with a damaged wheel and suspension. 
The eventful weekend, meanwhile, had continued for Max Fatten and later to service after suffering a road section collision. But there was a positive to take from the day, with the Finn setting his first fastest time in the competition in stage 12. At the end of the third day then, it was Gilbert leading the way with a healthy advantage of almost three and a half minutes. There was just 22.4 between second and third positions though. Jose Suarez was down in sixth after his role. And so to day four, just three stages remaining and only 44 kilometers to go. So the Vodafone Rally to Portugal had proved to be just as eventful for the Drive DMAC Fiesta trophy runners as it had been for the pinnacle of the WRC and the final leg would be no different. There would be heartbreak for the rally leader Conson Gelbert though, his rally ending in a road section on the way to the first stage following a traffic accident with an official rally vehicle. The latest incident in what had already been an eventful week in Portugal saw a somewhat surprised Gilles de Mevius find himself in the final podium place after opting for a safe and steady approach. The tactic had more than paid off. Yeah, I'm very pleased. Uh, I wouldn't believe if uh, at the start of the year I will be. They would told me that I will be third. Uh, obviously, uh, we need to improve the the pace still because. Uh, we are third, but we were not the fastest, so we had no puncture, no problem, and uh, we worked with the our brain, and uh, finally it's a fantastic result. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, for my first WRC event, it's amazing. Up at the front, meanwhile, the thrilling battle between Tom Cave and Sander Pan was now for the outright victory in this inaugural rally in the D-Max series. Cave was up for the fight, overhauling his 22-second deficit to move into the lead by just four tenths of a second. So it was down to Palm to respond and the Estonian did not disappoint with Cave damaging his steering slightly. A storming run through the penultimate stage saw Palm charge back into the top spot. It had been a breathless battle between the two, but it was Palm who would arrive back at service as the winner. I'm actually really happy to end this first Drive Team Festa Trophy Championship Rally here in Portugal with first place. Uh, of course I wasn't my pace wasn't the fastest one, but still I think my tactics were, were quite okay. And uh, of course some opponents had uh, unluck as well, but this is rally and I'm here. Uh, first one, uh, maximum points and uh, I think this is, this is the main thing. Now it's good to, to move on and go fast in Poland and Finland and then everything is possible. Yeah, second's really good. I would have taken that definitely before this weekend. Um, it's been really, really hard and learned a lot as well, which is the main thing. Um, we came away with second and yeah, we had, a, we had a puncture on the second run this afternoon, which, and I bent the steering. So I just thought, oh, let's back off now. It's, you know, let's, let's take the points, which is a shame because we had a good run for the first one. Um, but no, I'm just really pleased. Khan's final margin of victory, just under 21 seconds over Cave after four days. Demevius a distant third, with former leader Jose Suarez claiming fourth. Further back, Simon Konicki finished sixth, Marius Arsen seventh, and crazy Leo Uricic eighth. So it is Sander Pan who's the first leader of the Drive DMAC Fiesta Trophy, the Estonian taking a seven-point lead over Tom Cave. Suarez was just a point behind the Brit after receiving five extra points for his five stage wins in Portugal. So it would be Pan and co-driver James Morgan who had the most to celebrate on the finished podium. Attention would now switch to round two at Rally Poland in mid-June.